Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and this presentation is titled Raccoons and this deals with a program developed by Dr. James Van Allen of the University of Iowa. The picture there on the right shows the uh, scientific payload, um, that uh, cylinder there with a the point attached to a loci rocket. They used in this program two different uh, types of rockets. They used uh, the loci and a Deacon rocket. The uh, the way this operated was they took these uh, rockets and the instrumentation package up to about 70,000 feet on a balloon and then fired it. Rocket is the rocket part of the raccoons and the oons part is the balloon part. So they put the two words together. Um, and Dr. James Allen was very young in this picture. What you see on the left side, I worked for uh, Dr. Van Allen in a number of capacities. And um, when I was uh, an operator of the Engine 5 satellite, and I have a program talking about the various University of Iowa satellites that were launched, six of them in all, um, uh, while I was an operator for that, I was uh, in a storeroom looking for I don't remember what, but I came across a bunch of these crates with these packages in. And uh, I, I went up and I, I asked uh, Dr. Van Allen, uh, what are these? And so he started to tell me the story about the raccoons. And of course, with Google now, you can you can look this up, which is where I've got a lot of the uh, uh, later material. But um, they had a good 30 of those sitting there. And um, I asked him what they're going to do with them. And he said he really didn't know. And I said, well, I, I think they're really interesting. And I, I love stuff like that. And I said, could I have, you know, a couple of them? And he goes, sure. So the, the two there uh, depict the two uh, basic uh, different designs of the the vehicle and the the way these work was very was very interesting they uh, being carried up on a balloon uh, in the University of Iowa is in Iowa City Iowa where I grew up and the the deal was they couldn't just launch out of Iowa balloon to uh, 70,000 feet fire these things and have them come down in some farmer's uh, house from 100,000 feet that that wasn't good. So they went up over the North Sea, and the very first launch occurred on July 1st, 1955, uh, a shipboard off the coast of Greenland, uh, an icebreaker that uh, he arranged to uh, uh, to be able to launch these off of. And it's kind of interesting. There were also several boxes of little um, square aluminum boxes with two timers in them. These were essentially kitchen timers, nothing really too much more fancy than that. And the deal was you set the timers and they figured how long it would take the balloons to get up to 70,000 feet. And then when the uh, the timer went off, the rocket fired. Well, the first several times they tried to do this, the, the rockets didn't fire. And they figured that the, uh, the timers, due to the cold temperature, were freezing up and preventing it uh, from firing. So uh, Dr. Van Allen took and heated up some uh, cans of tomato juice put them in the box, sealed it up, and uh, it kept them warm enough that they subsequently fired. Okay, talk about <laughs> ingenuity. And the um, the interesting thing about this whole thing was I, I was walking uh, with, with Dr. Van Allen one time. We we're, were going out to lunch at a restaurant. We were walking and he says, you know, um, my degree wasn't in space physics. And I go, really? Because he's a predominant space physicist. And he goes, well, space physics didn't exist at the time. He got his degree in nuclear physics, which is closely related because you're dealing with um, particles and that. Uh, but there wasn't space physics. It didn't exist uh, back in the 30s. So he got his degree in uh, nuclear physics. And the, the neat thing about Dr. James Van Allen, he, uh, he has just an absolutely um, amazing career but he was just the nicest and easiest guy to talk to. And I, I had several nice chats with him up in his uh, seventh floor physics building office. He had a corner office up there. And this isn't for the windows or anything. It was for the storage. Uh, the, the corner offices were the, were the biggest. They'd put like 10 graduate students in there. Well, he had this whole place to himself and it was just full of documents and that. It was just a, it was just a, a, a really uh, cool office. And, and, uh, his main office, the formal office, uh, being head of the physics department, was on the second floor, but he spent most of his time up in that uh, seventh floor office. Now, um, I want to talk just a, a little bit about these raccoons and parts of them. Now, uh, one of the things he did in World War II is he uh, 
developed an ability to harden uh, vacuum tubes. He uh, developed uh, proximity fuses uh, for artillery shells. So as you can imagine, you, and, and you didn't have transistors back then, so you had to use vacuum tubes, and they had to be hardened. So the yellow uh, part here, just out of interest, was vacuum tubes that were used in these. These were made in um, the late 40s into the 50s. These things uh, were built. And the, uh, the yellow points to a vacuum tube, there's a little uh, piece of uh, phenolic that's held by the, uh, the screws and the bolts there so it wouldn't come out of the socket during the firing. The green arrow show, show, points to a uh, photo tube that was used to determine if the rocket was uh, spinning. And the, the, the blue arrow there, this is what's kind of cool, that points to a little weight and in the center, that little brown thing, that's a little light switch like you'd go to the hardware store which is i'm sure where they got it from because that is a hardware store type of switch and uh, when the rocket motor fired of course the acceleration would turn the weight down it would turn on the electronics the tubes would have to warm up for a, a few seconds and then you'd start collecting data now here's a picture of uh, one of the balloons with the raccoon uh, being carried up to altitude and on the right, uh, Dr. James Van Ellen there is in the center with Werner von Braun uh, uh, next to him there. That's the Explorer 1. That's the one that really uh, discovered the Van Ellen radiation belts, uh, which is depicted here and uh, with the various dimensions in that. The Explorer 1 and, of course, all the subsequent engine uh, satellites were used to um, explore uh, the Van Ellen radiation belts and essentially map them out. Now here's the raccoons, the top parts. There were a couple types. The blue arrows point to the Geiger-Muller tubes. Now most people refer to these as Geiger tubes. You, you never want to be the second guy uh, named on any project, you know, because uh, Mueller was the second guy and everybody forgets about him. So these are correctly known as Geiger-Muller uh, tubes, but of course, People have forgotten about him. Now, on the one above the left, above that is a scintillation uh, detector. And you notice on the right how the tubes are offset. This was an attempt to make somewhat of a, uh, a telescope, as you will, because, um, you know, crudely you could determine how the vehicle was spinning. And then if you had a coincidence of a, a particle going through both of those, you could possibly determine, hey, it was coming from a certain area. Th this is back when they knew, you know, virtually nothing about um, particles, uh, electrons, protons, cosmic rays, all that stuff at high altitude. Here's a couple other interesting parts. The On the left with the blue arrow is a instrumentation package that's uh, uh, sealed in uh, foam there to protect it. You notice those two white things under there. Those are pot potentiometers that, that you could set. And on the right-hand picture with the yellow arrow, um, those were... Uh, holders of batteries they they had just standard batteries that would you that you would put in there and these are what powered the instrumentation from the uh, or for the short life of the vehicle and this is a picture of dr james van ellen he, he passed away in 06 and as you can see with the blue arrow in the background those are a couple of the raccoons i don't know what happened to the um later raccoons. Um, I don't know if they're still in a storage room somewhere. The storage room now is an office. I, I went back there recently and uh, um, saw that it had uh, turned into a kind of an electronic technician's office and the storeroom had moved. And so, um, of course, at this time, uh, the physics building uh, doubled in size. So I'm sure they probably found another storage room uh, for the raccoons if they still even have them there or if they'd been dispersed. But I was very fortunate to get these. Um, I attained these back in the um, late 60s to early 70s. So I've, I've had these for a very long time and they've been through quite a few moves. But anyway, that is a very brief story of the raccoons. The um, Devices that preceded the Explorer 1, which really uh, mapped out, started to map out the Van Allen radiation belts, and of course, then the engine satellite series that I'll talk about in a uh, later presentation. 
So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.